like a string of pearls. The Marshall Islands stretch across a half million square miles of the world's deepest water. A heavenly necklace of coral atolls. Except there is little harmony in this paradise. More than four decades of American rule have left the 43,000 Marshallese in discord. Poverty and illness are companions in the street. Most of the young are jobless. Many of the old have only bitter memories. Michua Anjan. I don't like the American people or the American government. They have destroyed our culture. For hundreds of years, the Marshallese were among the best fishermen and navigators in the Pacific. There was tuna from the water, copra from the land, but a tidal wave was coming from the modern world. In February 1944, Americans arrived here in force, beating back the Japanese who had claimed the Marshalls as a strategic base. By the summer of 1944, the last of the Japanese had been driven from their bunkers, including this one on the island of Roy Namur. The Marshallese had been liberated, but they were not going to be left alone. Under a UN agreement, the U.S. took charge of the islands as a trust territory and a key military outpost. Between 1946 and 1958, islands the Marshallese called home, the U.S. government would call ground zero. Three, two, one, fire. Sixty-six atomic bombs were detonated on the evacuated islands of Anahuatoc and Bikini. The Cold War was hot, and America didn't need to seek approval from anyone, least of all the Marshallese. It was history's most massive atmospheric testing program, and one of the U.S. military's most remarkable public relations campaigns. Well, now then, James, will you tell them that the United States government now wants to turn this great destructive force into something good for mankind, something good for mankind. All right, is that all? Okay, got it. Convinced or coerced, hundreds of Marshallese were removed from their home islands, but not from harm's way. On March 1st, 1954, the world's largest hydrogen bomb cracked the sky above Bikini with a force twice as great as scientists had expected showering the islands with radioactive fallout. Children played in it as if it were snow. Since the time of the bomb, things have never been right with the children. I had my thyroid taken out. My son died of leukemia. He was one year old at the time of the bomb. Michua and her husband John, like countless other islanders, were never warned about the bomb. At the time, John was mayor of Rongelap Atoll and among a small group of Marshallese who were later brought to the U.S. for radiation testing and a lesson in arrogance. These are fishing people, savages by our standards. The Marshallese caught by fallout got 175 wrenchins of radiation. Most humans are exposed to less than 20 wrenchins in a lifetime. John, as we said, is a savage, but a happy, amenable savage. For John Angine, these black and white memories have drained much of the color from his life. There were many more problems after the bomb. The women are giving birth to children that are not like human beings. Those that survive have trouble growing and mental retardation as well. I lived with people who are what World War III would look like if, if World War III were to break out. Glenn Alkaley was a Peace Corps worker here. He's just begun an island-by-island -island survey of the radiation's after-effects. We're still counting bodies out there. We still don't have any adequate picture of how extensive the damage is. We don't know how many thousands of people were caught in this fallout. Recent medical studies confirm long-term effects are still appearing. In a 1986 study, 91% of the Marshallese tested had radiation-induced blood disorders. And the same report found double the normal rate of stillbirths and miscarriages. I have seven miscarriages. Lejean Eknelain's eighth birthday fell on the day the bomb was dropped. 
Seven miscarriages later, she has not forgiven the United States. I knew that if it wasn't what the United States have done for me and my family, my kids would be growing up like the others. Was Bikini a mistake? Was Rongoap a mistake? Oh, inevitably they were, but uh, certainly not intentional mistakes. Colonel Philip Harris commanded the U.S. military base on Kwajalein Atoll. He says Marshallese fears about long-term contamination are unwarranted. Just from the standpoint of safety, would you go back to Bikini and live? I've been on Bikini. There is absolutely no background radiation, zero. There is less background radiation on Bikini than there is in the capital of the United States. The only difficulty is the cesium. That's cesium-137. It's contaminated island plants and topsoil. In 1985, the danger from lingering radiation prompted the environmental group Greenpeace to evacuate hundreds of Marshallese from Rongelap Atoll, but only after the U.S. government refused to relocate them. Nuclear nomads, the people of Rongelap, now live on an atoll more than 100 miles from their home. Rongelap Senator Jetton Anjai. Our land is our sacred position. That's all we have. And today, our land has been destroyed. We cannot use it anymore. We cannot go there and live in peace because of the contamination. Are you troubled at all by the American nuclear legacy here in the Marshall Islands? No. I personally don't feel bad. In fact, I'm very proud that, that we, as many other nations, didn't just pick up and walk away and say, sorry about that, that's your problem. Of course, that's precisely what the Marshallese claim has happened. Negotiating with the U.S. for their independence in 1986, the Marshallese agreed to a one-time payment of $150 million to cover all damages caused by the years of atomic testing. Marshall Island President Amata Kabua says it was the price for freedom. We, we lost many things in that compact. We regret them, but what can you do? I mean, when you grow up with your brothers and he's a lot bigger than you and he slap you, what do you do? That's not apathy, it's reality. That American big brother has stolen much of the soul and self-sufficiency of the Marshallese. Our entire educational system, health system, transportation system, everything depends on 90%, 90% uh, of it depends on the United States grants. Tony DeBroom is a Marshall Island senator. The sun is, is practically set on Marshallese culture. Eclipsed might be a better description. Consider Kwajalein Atoll, leased to the U.S. for the next 26 years. The Marshallese who once lived here have been moved to make way for the American military base. The lagoon where islanders once caught fish now catches incoming test missiles from California, 4,200 miles away. Part transplanted suburb, part country club, it's home to some 3,000 Americans, but off limits to the Marshallese. They're allowed to work here, but not to live. On the right here, we have the uh, brand new uh, youth center. Just uh, completed construction. On the one side, it has a big dance floor, and on the other side, uh, games and so on and so forth. From Kwajalein's manicured lawns and baseball parks, it's just 15 minutes across the lagoon to Ebi home to many of the radiation exiles. Nearly 10,000 Marshallese jammed onto 78 acres of hot, treeless coral. Called the slum of the Pacific, it's among the most crowded places on Earth. How many families are in some of these, these homes? Oh, we're talking one room would be uh, maybe 10 by 10, and you have three families. Julian Ricklin is a local government worker. There are children everywhere here. Children everywhere. That's, that's your body. And you see children on garbage dumps. Why are they playing on the garbage They're dump? using the, this as a playground because uh, there is no playground on your body. Stalking the children and adults here is a cluster of diseases from both the first and third worlds. There's children here who died directly from malnutrition. Dr. Neil Palifax is with the U.S. Public Health Service and the kind of things like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, strokes are occurring in much earlier ages. What's more, the Marshallese have lost their old survival skills without gaining any new ones. Tuna comes from a can, not the ocean. And
American TV and culture produce a wish list without creating a workforce. With few schools and fewer jobs, teenagers are taking their own lives at a rate 100 times that of the U.S., all in a society that 50 years ago had no word for suicide. As an American citizen, I'm ashamed of what our government has done to these islands. This is what it looks like after uh, 45 years of strategic rule in a tiny colony. This is made in America. So the Marshall Islands have become a sort of third world laboratory for American culture, with the experiments more often than not running amok. That's why some of the Marshallese are simply petrified at the latest Made in America plans for these islands. One includes turning parts of their homeland into the world's largest garbage dump. It's a win-win situation for both parties because it will help take care of part of the solid waste problem on the west coast and it'll create land for the land-starved Marshallese. Dan Fleming is president of Micromar. His California company wants to ship upwards of 10% of all West Coast municipal garbage, that's 3 million tons a year, to a landfill he wants to build on the northern tip of Ebi. These people have been irradiated, they have been economically exploited, they've been forced to migrate from their own home islands, and now you want them to become guardians of the garbage, our garbage. I can understand why there is opposition to this. I mean, this is obviously, this project obviously has some public relations problems. To say nothing of the technical ones. According to the EPA, even household garbage, the kind Micromar wants to send to the marshals, contains toxic waste like batteries, paint thinners, and pesticides. Eight pounds of it per ton. Fleming says the landfill's liner will be state of the art, which means its safety is in the eye of the beholder. Could this be punctured? Did you get a hole in this? Not very easily. Could happen. Though. Could happen. There's, again, there are no absolute guarantees. As far as I'm concerned, it's a fail-safe thing from the Marshallese environmental position. Micromar is taking a real chance. Obviously, Micromar will also reap huge profits if it works, but that's the way the system works. But, but if, there's, if there's pollution, it's going to be the Marshallese. If there's contamination, right. it's going to be the Marshallese who pay the price. I wish I could guarantee perfection, but I can't. What Fleming can guarantee is money for the Marshall Islands, perhaps $20 million a year to be custodians of American trash. And to buy their economic freedom from Uncle Sam, the Marshallese leadership is even considering accepting U.S. nuclear waste. The Speaker of your Parliament is quoted as saying, a lot of the atolls are already contaminated. A couple more containers of nuclear waste won't make any difference. Well, yes, that's what the people uh, say. If they are island, we cannot go back to it. You it's, might as well put a few more barrels of... No, it's waste. better to earn some money out of the situation than having nothing. Unfortunately, some of our leaders uh, have become easy prey for American entrepreneurs and carpetbaggers who, who come up with these bizarre ideas of development. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. We've suffered enough. Keep your waste, but don't dump it on us.